I turn my head and lay eyes on a striking man carrying a basket of bread. In a white side-button jacket with black trim, he must be the chef, though he looks like he's not much older than me. And he might be the most attractive man I've ever seen. With rich dark brown hair, sharp blue eyes, and a close-cut beard that highlights cheekbones to die for. The sight of him approaching makes me freeze awkwardly in my chair. This is the person who made all that amazing food? All words leave me as he sets the bread basket down and extends a hand. I'm Chef Davies. He introduces himself. His voice is just as warm as his smile, and deep enough to send chills down my spine. And I hear you need some help picking a main course. I stare dumbly at him for another few moments, before collecting myself. I resist the urge to slide my hand into his. As much as I want to touch him, experience has taught me that what I might see will make me even more awkward than I already am naturally. I'm C.J. Roberts, I reply, blushing down at his hand. And I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I don't shake hands. I'm so used to saying the words without remorse, but this time is different, and I'm worried about offending him. It's nice to meet you, C.J. Roberts, who doesn't shake hands. He replies, withdrawing his hand and sinking into the chair to my left. I look up to see him leaning in and smiling winningly, and if it's possible to blush harder, I do. Is it okay to ask what C.J. stands for? His proximity makes my cheeks burn hotter by the second. Catherine Jane? I murmur, looking up into his eyes. Catherine Jane. He replies slowly as if tasting the words. Chef Davies? I reply teasingly, folding my hands in my lap. He laughs, deep and booming. Okay, I guess you can call me Drew. Short for Andrew. He grins, and I notice a dimple on his left cheek. Now, salmon versus halibut. I take a deep breath and nod, refocusing. It's not easy. Being this close to him, trying to have a normal conversation, takes everything I've got. It would help if I weren't so gawky to begin with, but here we are. He gestures to the bread. Have a bite. Then try the salmon again. I do as he asks. I go to lift the fork to my mouth, and he reaches to stop me. Instinctively, I pull back and look at him, wide-eyed. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. He says huskily, with a sexy smile that makes me melt under his stare. Just... I was going to tell you to close your eyes. Then he clears his throat, as if suddenly aware of the intimacy that's bubbled between us. I breathe through my nose, close my eyes, and take a bite. The subtle flavor sings under the lime dressing. I can't help the groan that slips out of my mouth. My eyes fly open self-consciously, to find Drew staring at me with an inscrutable expression. I swallow hard. Sorry, I say. It's just so good. A smile tugs at his lips. Thank you. He replies. His eyes flick down to the bread, then back up to me. Now, bread, then halibut. Eyes closed. Something about his quiet command makes me blush again, but I comply. The firm, slightly sweet fish has a mushroom sauce that complements it nicely. But I realize it doesn't have the heartiness and the punch of the salmon. This time when I open my eyes, I know exactly what I want. Salmon, hands down. My eyes meet his. You're good. He gives a shrug. I've done this a time or three. He replies nonchalantly. Coming from anyone else, it would sound arrogant. But he's got a humility that is ridiculously endearing. What would you have chosen? I ask curiously. His answering grin is so gorgeous it practically makes me dizzy. Life's too short for absolutes. Salmon for lunch, halibut for dinner, I say. Well, if I could cook like you, I'd probably say the same, I admit. Or, if I could cook at all. He leans forward on the table. Well, nobody's perfect. He replies. Our eyes meet for a moment, and I let myself stare back. The small space between us practically crackles with energy, 